All right, welcome to a quick tutorial on how to set up a basic VI in LabVIEW to visualize data from a .csv file. First thing we're gonna do is create a new project. So we can go up to File, New VI. Here we have the front panel. This is where all of your controls are gonna go. And here we have the back panel. This is where all of the coding actually happens. So we'll start off by loading our file. To do that, we're gonna to go to File IO, Read Delimited Spreadsheet.vi. We wanna tell the spreadsheet where to find our file. So to do that, we'll create a control for the file path. So right click, Create Control. And now if you're on a Windows PC, you can press Control E. If you're on a Mac, you can press Command E. And this will bring you to the front panel and you can see that we've created a file dialog control. Now we need to tell the program what format our data is in. So down at the bottom, we have delimiter. And if you need to see what each of these nodes does, you can press Control H for the help and it'll give you a nice little contextual menu. So we're gonna right click on delimiter, create constant. Now by default, it's set to read in uh, tab delimited data, but we're gonna read in CSV or comma separated values. So we need to type a comma in here. Make sure that there's no space when you're typing that comma. Now, the next quirk about LabVIEW is that instead of reading data in columns like most programs, so if you're used to Excel or Python, it's gonna read all of your data in columns. Here, we're gonna be reading data in rows. So to do that, we're gonna transpose our data. Right click on the transpose terminal and create a constant. Now it's by default set to false, but we do want to transpose our data, so we will set it to true. Now let's have a quick chat about data types. So currently we're gonna be reading in data in the form of double. So it means that you have numbers, a decimal, and then your decimal values. We can also load in data in string format. So string format is gonna be text. So if we take these same controls, we can actually copy the whole thing. Hold control, or if you're on a Mac, you can hold option and drag and that'll copy it. And we can change this to string. Now we can read the values of our string to get our column headers. If we wanna get our column headers, we don't actually need to uh, transpose our data. So we can get rid of that. And then if you're left with a broken wire, you can press Control or Command B. Now we can wire in the same control for our file path. And then we can create an indicator. So this is gonna show all the data contained in these rows. And then for our header, we can just show the first row. So the reason we're not transposing our data is we're gonna create a one dimensional array of the values in the header of our file. So it's important to think about the different types or dimensions of data that we can have. So first we have our string data that deals with uh, text-based data. And then we have our numbers coming in here in the double format. We could also have numbers in our integer format so this is gonna be no decimal places allowed, whole numbers only. And what we have here is what we would call an element. So it's one value. If we stick that element into an array, we now have a one dimensional array. We can increase the dimension of that to a two dimensional array. That means you're gonna have rows and columns. Now, lab view is row column agnostic if it's one dimension, meaning that there is no uh, difference between a row and a column, it just reads a line of data. So if we create an indicator on here, there's a solid line connecting the control, or in this case, constant, to the indicator. If I increase the dimension of this, it's no longer gonna be able to connect to it because it was previously one dimensional. And if we wanna display two-dimensional data, we need a two-dimensional indicator. So we can create a new indicator. And now you'll see that there is uh, a double line. So we have a double line with a little gap in the middle. This is representing two-dimensional data. So rows and columns. 
Now let's take a look at the data that we've brought in. So we'll load our file. You can double click on the file path dialog control to get to your um, front panel or press control E. If we load our file in, we'll select it from the desktop. We can run the program by clicking the arrow or press control or command R. And you'll see that in our floating point data, it's created the first column. So remember, this is going to uh, be rows in your original file. So the first column is just showing zeros. And that's because the way it converts string values or text data to numbers is to just make them zero. So we actually need to remove this from our data first. And this is going to correspond to this string. So these are our column headers from the original file. And we now say that we have this transposed data. So each of these rows corresponds to a column in this data set. And if we want to, we can actually change the display of this data set so that we go down instead. And you'll see that it makes no difference to lab view if you have a one dimensional data set, whether you represent it as a row or a column. Now let's figure out how to remove this unwanted column of data. So we can go into our array functions. So right click, array, and here we're gonna delete from array. So we can wire our data in. The length that we wanna delete is one. So we'll put one into the length and we wanna start from column zero. The way this works is we'll have our row index and our column index. So since we want to remove a column from our data, we'll start at column zero. So now what we're saying is at column zero, delete one column of data. Now it's important to remember that like most programming languages, LabVIEW is zero indexed, meaning that the first index of your data will always be zero. So if you have 10 data points, they'll count zero to nine. So now we have the deleted portion here, but we're not interested in that. So let's have a look at our array with subset deleted. If we now go in and we run our program, we'll see that we no longer have that column of zeros. Now let's take a look at what our data actually looks like. So on the front panel, if we want to create an indicator of, a, of this, we can make a graph. So your options are to use the waveform graph provided with the default LabVIEW settings. But since these look absolutely terrible, let's use the silver ones instead. So we'll go silver, graph, waveform graph, silver. So these look a little bit better. Now. This is going to plot each of our channels. And in this case, we have five channels of EMG and then two channels of FSR data or force sensing resistor data. So if we plug this into our data, we can double click on the graph, drag it over here and wire it in. If we now run the program, we'll see that all of our channels are plotted in here. And if we want, we can start turning off plots that we don't need. So let's say we only want to look at a couple of things. Okay, let's start just by looking at one plot at a time. We can see our EMG showing up, no problem. So let's turn everything back on. If we right click on the graph, we can go to visible items and graph palette. This is gonna provide us with tools that allow us to zoom. So we can zoom over a selected range and zoom back or the hand tool to pan around the graph. You can label your axes by double clicking into the, you can label your axes by double clicking into the label. And then we can get a little tricky we can go into the back panel or the block diagram and let's create an index. Okay, so we're gonna index the array, meaning that we're gonna choose a channel that we want to view. 
and we can create a control on the row input. And then wire that back into our waveform graph. Now this control that we've created is gonna allow us to select which of these rows of data we wanna plot on the graph. So if we run the program, we can change our indicator, run it again, and it's now gonna to go to the next row. If we wanna be able to continuously do this, we can just stick this part of our program into a while loop. This means that while the condition is met, this code will continue to execute until a stop condition is met. So if we create a control at this stop icon, that'll create a control over here. And now until we press this stop button, the code will continue to run. So now we can change through this and it'll allow us to update the channel that we're looking at. So here we see our FSR data and then our channels of EMG. If we want to stop the program, we can just press the stop button. In the next video, we'll take a look at how we can do some simple signal processing with the example of using EMG data. We will load in the data, full wave rectify the data, filter the data, and then we'll use the FSR channels to cut up the data into gate cycles. From there, we can cycle average the data and then create the linear envelope for that muscle during the gate cycle.